In medical terminology, prefixes, suffixes, and word roots communicate different types of information. All medical terms will have at least one word root and one suffix. Prefixes tell us time, number, location, and condition. An example of time is pre, as in prenatal, meaning before the time of birth. An example of number is biceps. Bi means two. The biceps muscle is divided into two heads, or parts. An example of location is subdermal. Sub means below, and derm means skin. Subdermal is below the skin. An example of condition might be hypertension. Hyper means too much or too strong. Hypertension means elevated blood pressure. Suffixes tell us condition, surgical procedure, or merely serve as a word ending. Examples of suffixes telling us a condition include tonsillitis, or inflammation of the tonsils, and cephalalgia, which is a headache, or head pain, as alga means pain. Examples of surgical procedures include appendectomy, or surgical removal of the appendix, and colostomy, or the creation of a permanent opening in the colon. Word endings include AC, IC, AL, and many others, as in cardiac or fungal. Word roots describe things, as in body parts and systems. Examples include cardio, gastro, and arthro, meaning heart, stomach, and joint. Word roots are often written with slash o at the end. This is called the combining form. If the suffix or word root following this word root begins with a vowel, drop the o. An example is tonsillitis. The word root is tonsillo and the suffix is itis. Drop the o and you have tonsillitis. If the suffix or word root following begins with a consonant, keep the o. An example is cardiorespiratory. The word root following cardio is respiro. We kept the o for cardiorespiratory. So, to sum up, words in medical terminology are broken up into prefixes, word roots, and suffixes. Some words, like prenatal, have all three parts, but all words in medical terminology have at least one word root and one suffix. Now, please complete the exercises shown. If you feel confident with the exercises, you should then move on to the next lesson, in which you'll learn how we talk about directions when talking about the human body.